and welcome to Mod Pack Development. Um, this is the second episode of the series. What happened to the first episode? Well, the first episode was episode zeros, and this is the second episode, so it's episode two. Don't question it. That's just how it works. So what I've decided that what we're going to do in this series is we are going to do it in progress updates. So every so often I'll show you a progress update and kind of go walk you through some of the steps that I've taken to get to where I'm at now. So right now we're still working a little bit more on organization and stuff before we actually really dig in and start doing some stuff in game. You can see we've started up Minecraft right here, but the first thing I want to show you today is something very special that involves a mod that I added that will make the play experience seem a lot different and it'll it'll just add a, a little bit of zest to the whole experience and that's great because what we're after here is to show everyone what we is fully possible with the amount of configuration we can we can do right now so let's let's look at this right here stone one block of stone two blocks of stone they stack together right a hundred blocks of stone is the max stack size. So a hundred blocks is the max stack size, and we've uh, adjusted the stack size for a bunch of different things, including uh, what else had trouble stacking before? Um, I'm trying to think. Boats had trouble stacking before. Those stack up to a hundred now. Um, potions, potions that match stack up to ten. Uh, just so it's not super uber overpowered. Um, enchanted books that match stack up to 10, and so on and so forth. There's just a bunch of different little changes like that, that uh, to the stack size amounts of all of these different things. And so, where, how on earth have we done this? That is an excellent question. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our instance folder right here under .minecraft, in order to do this stuff, uh, what we need to do is we need to have stackup mod installed, and it has its config folder right here, dun dun, dun. Uh, and so we have a little folder right here, and it has its own scripting system. And so what we've done is we've set the size. Uh, all those with a size of 64 now have a stack of 100. All those with a size of 16 now have a stack size of 100. Uh, beds have a stack set, and then and then a couple of other little things that were being troublemakers, such as beds, minecarts, uh, boats, cakes, potions, enchanted books, records, so on and so forth. Some of them are being set to 10, one of them is being set to 42, don't ask me why. Some things that should, uh, shouldn't be stackable are being set to 1, such as the uh, advanced inventory module, which you only ever will need one of. So yeah, it, it's, uh, this, is, this is how you do it. Um, the tilde right there means that it's about this type of stuff. Uh, we don't actually have Botania in here anymore, so we can get rid of that. Uh, but, yeah, this is, this is how we've done it. Uh, change the stack size of all the items. And you'll, you'll start to see this right here, and this, this may seem quite overwhelming for someone that's not familiar with programming and other stuff like that. So what's going on? Um, so what we're doing is we're having we're setting the item or block or whatever that we want to uh, change the stack size of right here. Then we're going putting an arrow because we're changing the stack size to the number one hundred. So what we're doing is we're setting the item with an ID of in, and in quotes, Minecraft colon bed. Minecraft is the mod that it comes from. In this case, Minecraft is the mod ID of vanilla Minecraft. So Minecraft colon and then the ID for the mod we have is bed. So let's look at this here real quick. Let's look at beds. If we uh, have advanced tooltips turn on, it's like F3 and T, I believe. And with actual editions installed, we can see a bunch of extra advanced info here. And you can see right under the bed thing, we have my, it says Minecraft colon bed. And that is our item ID for this. 
So say for example we wanted to change the stack size of the walrus from extra cells too. So the walruses have a stack size. Uh, so okay, let's see here. Uh, the ID for the walrus is extra cells. That's the mod it's from. Colon walrus. So you can see right here we have a block with an ID of extra cells colon walrus is being set stack size of 42. Perfect. So that's the idea behind this. We can we can do whatever we want with this. And uh, we can set the stack size to whatever we want for pretty much whatever block we want. And up here is just setting the, the defaults uh, for items. So if we ever come across something later on while we're testing the pack and stuff like that, we're going to have to come back in here and figure out how this stuff works. And so this is how uh, we have changed the stack sizes using the mod stack up. It's been pretty good so far. Like it hasn't had any major hitchups or anything like that. I, I don't know. I haven't done a whole ton of play testing, but it seemed to function quite nicely. So. So what are some of the other things that we've done? That's, a, that's an excellent question. So one of the big things we've done is that we've gone through and we've disabled the world gen for a bunch of these mods. And we have uh, made a list of all of the world gen that we have disabled here. So we can go back pretty much whenever we want to find, oh, hey, there's a structure I want to find. It's the pirate ship. Pirate ships are from the quark config. OK, so we can go into the quark config, find pirate ships and enable them again, for example. So let's actually do that, because I want pirate ships in my uh, in the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the config folder, go to Quark, dun, dun, dun. we're going to find pirate, find next. So. Right now, under world gen, we have all this stuff set to false. And we're going to set pirate ships to true. So now, when we go into game and load the game up again, pirate ships will spawn naturally in worlds. So that's super cool. That's exactly what we were looking for uh, to do. So, ta-da! That is how you change the world gen. It's pretty simple. Uh, configs generally are pretty straightforward. This B right here stands for a Boolean. Uh, basically what a Boolean is, is it is a true or false. This pirate ships variable could be true or it could be false, that's it. Those are the only two options you have. Same for these Pathfinder maps, the nether smoker spawning, uh, nut fossils, you know, just a bunch of stuff like this that it could What are some of the other things I've done since the last episode? Well, I've also made a list of the core resources that the pack has to offer right here. And basically what I've done is I've gone through JEI for the entire mod pack. And if we can see our window right here, I just went through all 155 pages of JEI here. And I logged all of the different um, resources that we have that we're going to be working with here. And so... Yeah, pretty simple. Um, e each one has a, a different variance and so on and so forth. And you can see what type it is and yeah. And this is just to help me get organized and realize what there is that I have to work with for each of these things. It's not really... It's not really about anything else. I'm just I'm this is this is my organization way. I I need to get organized if we're going to customize this pack the way I want to. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to tear the whole thing down and we're going to build it back up from scratch. We're going to remove all of the recipes and we'll go over this in the next episode what uh what it's like to remove recipes. Um we're going to mess around with world gen solidify all the resources and machines, finalize the world gen, plan the progression in hardcore questing mode, uh, which we have swapped out uh, in favor of hardcore questing mode instead of uh, better questing. Add the Then, after we've planned out our progression, we're going to add the recipes. 
We are then going to add all other recipes, including food recipes, loot tables, and so on and so forth, finish the HQM quests, and then we're going to do some play testing before we actually put it out, because that is a very essential st step that I have looked over sometimes in the past. But anyway, this to-do text document is just kind of um, going over, it's, it's my keep track of things document. If I notice something that needs to be done while I'm going through and looking at, say, for example, um, I'm looking at this extra ex extended crafting thing, uh, and I notice that, hey, this block needs to be renamed or something like that, then what I can do is I can go and uh, put it in here and go under rename and I can rename something. So we, let's actually go over renaming something uh, because I've renamed a bunch of blocks actually but, uh, since the last time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename mana infused to magical metal. Mana infused. Uh, this is a thermal ore and a metal. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna rename everything to magical metal instead of mana infused. What do we have to do to do that? So this is actually the first instance where we're going to have to, let's go into our instance folder, uh, go into our scripts folder right here. This is craft tweaker stuff that we're dealing with. So, so how are we going to go about renaming things by default in the pack? So there is a very awesome mod, uh, a great mod that will allow you to, to do this quite simple. It is the resource loader mod, and basically what it does is it reloads a resource pack by default. Uh, what resource pack? Where where do you put this resource pack? It's in the resources folder right here. So you need to make sure you have the resources folder. And under custom language file, we have Ian US, and you can see all the stuff that I've named right here. So we're it's under thermal foundation, and so I have just have this ordered by mod. So we're going to start a new little section right in here where we are going to rename this. So we need to find out, uh, because of the way this stuff works, we're gonna push control, and you can see the meta's unlocalized name, tile.thermalfoundation.or.mithril.name. And so that's what we're going to have to put uh, right here, tile dot thermal foundation dot or dot mithril dot name. Perfect. And we're going to set its name to magic magical. What are we changing this to? Let's uh, let's find magical metal. Magic metal, magical metal ore. Awesome. So now we have renamed this. And so if we reload our resource packs, this can take a while sometimes, reloading resource packs, particularly in modded. Sometimes it can even crash depending on how much you have, how much RAM you have going. Working on it. And there we go, hey, reloaded resource packs. Okay, so now we check, you can see under mana infused, we don't have anything there, no ore, because it's called magical metal. Dun, dun, dun. Magical metal ore. Ta-da, priest cake. So now we gotta go through and do that for the rest of these. Ta-da, okay, here we are. We have all of our magical metal stuff and we're going to merge that with the rest of Thermal Foundation. Here's all of our magical metal entries. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna go back into here, reload the resource packs again. Hey, there we go. Okay, so now we can see mana infused coin is the only thing that we missed here, so Let's see, Magical Metal Coin, we've definitely renamed it. So let's look at the entry here, item.thermalfoundation.coin.coinmithril. So here's our coin entry right here, item dot 
Thermal foundation. Oh, hey, we missed the D, messed up the D with a C. So now that we fixed that typo, next time we reload resource packs, let's try that right now. Okay, there we are. Uh, uh oh, it looks like it's still a mana infused coin. We may have had multiple typos there. Thermal foundation dot coin dot coin mithril dot name. Well, I'm not sure what's going on with the coin, but uh, I'll have to look at that a little bit more. But um, you can see magical metal now turns up our previously mana infused mill. So, ta-da, here we are. We have renamed all of those items. The coins, I don't know if they're even going to have a big part in what we're doing. We may just disable them anyway, so I'm not super put out by the fact that that isn't working. Um, there are some things that you, that is really, that you can't just change the name of. For example, the uh, at forestry the logs of forestry. I've tried to change the names of the logs of forestry to Larchwood Log instead of just Larchwood. Just, you know, just to try stuff out. Um, and to give a different feel of the pack and stuff like that. And uh, you, you can't. I, I tried. It just does not work. Um, just because there's no unlocalized, there's no localized name for each of these, so that's just, that's a shame. Anyway though, we have our uh, game plan for how we're going to put together the pack and what order and stuff we're gonna do stuff in. Uh, and we have uh, our stack sizes changed, and we have language files changed, and we have some config world gen stuff changed, so that's, I think, where we're going to have to leave it off for today. Um, next episode should hopefully be coming a little bit sooner. And in the next episode, teaser time, uh, we are going to go over the scripts and uh, stuff like that. And so we're going to go over adding items, um, disabling recipes, and adding recipes and stuff like that. So that is, that is the plan for next episode. So stay tuned. And I will see you in the next one.